everybody so we are back to our our videos here we've got uh, just finished the SR latch NAND version we're now going to do the SR latch with enable now I've kind of created this little dotted box section down here um, and that's because this right here is what we just did up above so um, the way I kind of designed this we've got our S and R, and then we've got this S prime R prime. So when we look up Q, we don't have to really analyze the circuit. S prime R prime, we could just look up here and find out what the Qs will be. Um, so that'll help us out a little bit when we're we're going through the the design and hopefully make it a little quicker. So we always want to do this kind of this basically a, a bottom up style design or what's called object oriented, where you keep adding new features onto a base design. So let's start by taking a look at this uh, new enable. And as you can kind of guess from the way I've, I've done it here, if I've got enable equal to zero. Um, now, a zero, remember, into a NAND is going to force a one. Doesn't matter what the other value is. Zero into a NAND will force a one. We don't even need to find out what the second value is. That's in here. So S and R are irrelevant. That's why those X's are there. And if we have two ones, two ones means to hold. So probably shouldn't have put this here because it this is actually not as important on what the output is. You know what really matters here is that this is going to hold whatever the the previous values were. So we sometimes do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw this. Actually, let me, let me see if I can put a text thing here. Um, so oh, we sometimes call these the old values. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not. There we go. Uh, we sometimes use the lowercase q to distinguish between the two that's on here. But anyway, it'll Q stays the same, Q prime. Maybe for the moment I'll just do uh, Q just to let you know we're we're holding our, our own values. There's like a little bit of a space there. Okay. That looks better. Okay, so zero on enable forces a hold. That's kind of the end of the interest of the enable. Now we're going to come in and we'll put a one into enable. Now that no longer is going to force the output here. So now imagine our S for a sec is zero. And again, a zero forces a one make r equals zero and a zero will force a one so we still end up with the zero zero here essentially with the one here um, for just an and if you were to block out that for a sec one and s is going to give you s negated will give you s prime so essentially when this becomes a one this is just an inverter for s same thing's going to happen for R because it's an identical circuit, just with a different uh, input name on. So essentially, whatever's here is going to flip, which is what we see with the zero to a one. So if we put in a zero zero, it becomes S prime one R prime one, which does another hold. Now, if we go and it's enable and we have zero, one, so S is zero and R is one. Yeah, good job. Okay, S is zero, oh, R is one. Uh, again, this is going to function like an inverter, so R prime is going to become zero. So, uh, one and one, 
negated zero. A one zero on S prime R prime, we can just look it up here. One zero did a reset. That's just like our original, the NOR version interpretation of S and R. That's why it's very helpful to call these S prime and R prime because it makes it, allows us to deal with the outer part of the enable. Um, in which case that means we're essentially going to do, right, one zero does a reset, which means I get a zero and a one and it is a reset now we can do uh, s is equal to one and r is equal to zero Okay, so if S is 1 and R is 0, and these act like inverters because enable's on, so I end up with S prime is 0 and R prime is 1, and I can look up S prime 0, R prime 1, which gives me a 1, 0 on the output. I guess I could write that in here, which means I get a one, zero here. Hey, it worked for me. Okay. Uh, and we get a set. So now we've got kind of our next function. And it's nice because I can control when I want it to happen. If I don't want these to happen, I just turn enable off. And it's irrelevant what happens to SR. Um, my one, one, that's going to be my danger zone. So remember, if I went to 1, 1, these act like inverters, so I get zeros and two zeros, S prime, R prime on zeros, gives me this 1, 1, oops, which is my illegal state. It's illegal because it's going to make um, next time I go back to any of the holds, including the enabled version. Right, so now I'll have a very easy way to go back to hold with that enable. Just turn enable off and it'll go meta stable. So essentially this just sets up a danger spot that, that we don't want to allow. So. Um, the disallowed version on an SR latch with enable is all ones on the input. So now we've got our next, this is kind of an important building block, because if you look at the regular SR latch, there was no indication of time. You can, you change S and R and it changes these. It has memory, it'll hold for an indefinite period, but it doesn't matter when you change them. So it's sequential, but it's not synchronous. So an SR latch, is an asynchronous sequential logic. The enable allows me to make times when it can't change. So it can't change when enable is equal to zero. And so, you know, that's kind of a, a crucial aspect to us that that enable is uh, basically gets periods of time when it won't work. We're going to want to do one more upgrade and now having this enable as kind of like a partial clock we'll be able to add a full clock afterwards. So we've got one more thing, which will be called a D-latch. Um, technically an enabled one, but we usually just call it a D-latch. And then we can uh, move on to doing uh, a, a true flip-flop, which is what we're going to want for real memory.